Hi, I'm Vicola, a developer advocate at Grafana Labs. In this video, we'll walk through front-end observability dashboards and explore the valuable insights they provide for monitoring your front-end applications. In the previous video, we discussed the first metric you'll see on your front-end observability dashboards, Core Web Vitals. If you haven't watched that video yet, you can check it out here or using the link in the description box down below. For this video, we'll focus on the other important section of your front-end observability dashboard and walk through the important information that you can collect from these sections. Before before we dive in, let's recap what Grafana Frontend Observability is. Grafana Cloud's Frontend Observability brings visibility to the performance of your frontend applications by making real user performance from metrics measurable and actionable. This solution is made up of two parts, Grafana Thera, a web SDK, which collects real user monitoring data like performance, metrics, logs, exceptions, events, and traces, and Grafana Cloud Frontend Observability, a hosted service that turns this data into clear, actionable insights through out-of-the-box dashboards. Let's move on to an example of Grafana front-end observability dashboards that you can also access through Grafana Play. I'll provide the link in the description box so you can follow along. This example dashboard is collecting data from a headless Chrome application called Faro Shop front-end that has been instrumented with Grafana Faro. This is available on GitHub. The link will be provided below. The dashboard sections we'll be exploring today are page loads, page performance, error sessions, and filters. And finally, HTTP preview. Views. We'll discuss what these sections are and their importance and how to understand and analyze the information provided in each section. Let's start with the page load section. This first metric shows the total number of page loads in the specified time frame. As you can see on the dashboard, the page has been loaded by users over 100 times in the past 30 minutes. Scrolling down, you'll see the page loads and errors chart. This shows the distribution of page loads in the past 30 minutes. The blue represents successful loads, and the red represents pages that have hit errors. For example, if a user attempted to load a page but encountered a JavaScript error, this would show up in red. You can use this time window selection to zoom into a specific interval. If you click the Explore button, you can see the underlying query that aggregates these page loads and errors. Let's return back to the overview page and move further down the dashboard. You'll see the page loads metrics related to Core Web Vitals, TTFB, FCP, and LCP at the 75th percentile. This means that 25% of your users experience performance worse than or equivalent to what's shown here. Page load metrics are important because they give you insight into the user experience of loading pages and how it relates to Core Web Vitals. You can use this information to see how well a page is loading and what errors may be occurring and the general health of your page as it's loading. Page loads can also help you understand what time intervals your users are most active and when they're least active. Now let's move on to the page performance section. This section displays four page IDs, each with their own Core Web Vital metric and error metrics. These page IDs are auto-generated by Faro Cloud Receiver, which creates and attaches page IDs to Faro signals. Users have the option to override page IDs when you instrument your app. The color represents the performance quality. Red indicates poor performance, yellow means needs improvement, and green represents good performance. You can select each page to see additional information about that specific page's performance, including page load details, the session IDs that have interacted with this page, and in-depth logs. We recommend using this section to pinpoint which pages require improvement and understand the health of a page and important KPI breakdowns for each individual page. Now let's move on to the error section. Similar to page loads, in this section, you can view the total number of errors that have happened in the selected time range, as well as their distribution over time. This dashboard gets even more granular, showing most frequent errors hit by users, top errors by page ID, and error count by browser. Let's click into a specific error. Here you see a stack trace, detailed error message, and the error message metadata, all of which can be useful when it comes to investigating errors. You can also choose sessions directly from the error detail panel. Access to detailed error monitoring and the ability to narrow issues down to a specific time frame brings you closer to identifying the root cause of errors. At the top of our dashboard next to errors, you'll see the sessions tab. We'll click into that tab. Every time a user visits your page in your application, Faro automatically creates a new unique session ID instance for that user. This session ID tracks the user from start to finish or timeout, and sessions are either created or resumed when a user visits and uses the app. The sessions overview shows the amount of sessions in each time interval and it's segmented to correspond with a page ID. Below that chart, you'll find a sessions table where you can find 
all recorded user sessions. You will see timestamp associated errors, sessions ID, page ID, browser, and platform information alongside session life cycles. By selecting a session, we are brought to a session summary page where you get additional information about that session's real user monitoring metrics core web vital information, as well as user journey, we can see all the page ID the user interacted with in chronological order and even more detailed information for each user's request. You can also get information about the user's trace and see the page performance for each user while they are using your application or service. Sessions data bridges the gap between raw metrics and the actual user experience. With this sessions data, you can correlate errors, logs, and events that occurred from a particular user during a single session using your application. Let's return back to the overview page at the top of the dashboard next to the sessions, you'll see an HTTP tab. We'll click into that section. This section lets you analyze the health and performance of your HTTP requests of your applications. You can see total requests, total errors, percentage of error, average TTFB, and additional metrics related to your application's HTTP requests. Finally, let's discuss filters. At the top of the page in every tab, overview, error, sessions, HTTP, you will see filters. You can specify the filter by clicking the plus button and then specifying the label and value. You can filter by tags you created when you instrumented your app with Vero and pre-configured tags. With filters, you can slice and dice your data based on the meta information provided by the SDK. If you wanted to filter your app by version, you can also do so easily with this filter. This provides additional granularity of your RUM data by the slices that you've specified. And there you have it. You now know about the core sections of Grafana front end observability dashboards and how to use them to gain valuable insights into your front end performance. To learn more about implementing these solutions in your own applications, make sure to visit the documentation link linked in the description box. Make sure to hit the subscribe button to learn more about Grafana Frontend Observability Solution and stay updated with our latest content. See you in the next video.